What is up guys, it is me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week one of the Pokemon Premier League Season 6. Boy, it's been a while um, since I played Pokemon, let alone competitive Pokemon or draft league formats. This is my first game uh, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, um, and first league game since the PPL Season 5 finished? No, yes. D-League finished? One of them two. Um, it's been a while, so I was a bit scared going into this game. Now, I should quickly mention my opponent. We are up against Paul, uh, aka Paulie Mac, and he is the coach, or sorry, manager of the West Coast Wing Goals. Now, I'm hoping it's going to be a long shot. I'm going to try and get a draft analysis up before this video, uh, but if not, we'll go over my team very quickly because I'm not going to have team builders for this. I don't have the time for that. We've got a pretty standard uh, Dragon Dance, um, Fly Neum Z, uh, Fly, Dragon Claw, Re uh, Earthquake and Dragon Dance. We've got Physically Defensive Delmice with Power Whip, Knock Off, uh, Synthesis and Rapid Spin. I did want the Hazard Removal because I do have two things weak to rocks. Um, Paul had a few things which could carry rocks. Looking at his team alone, he's got three. Um, with Cobberberry, just so it can kind of take on the Crocodile a bit easier. Next up we've got... Um, especially offensive Jirachi with Moonblast, Stealth Rock, uh, Energy Ball and Psychic. The coverage hits this team really well. Um, Paul's just got like a team of slow and then fast things, so like the speed tiering for Jirachi was kind of good and it allowed me to invest a little tiny bit into its bulk as well. Next up we have Mega Aero, um, just a fast physically offensive version, no nothing too fancy about it. This week, uh, Stone Edge, Aerial Ace, Roost and Aqua Tail. It hits like his whole team for super effective or neutral damage um, really hard, so it was kind of like the first thing on my team sheet probably for this game. Uh, next up we have got Special Defensive Gastrodon, which takes on a lot of his special threats quite well, um, but sadly a lot of them also do get grass coverage. So I am, of course, Rindoberry. We've got School, Toxic, Earth Power, Recover. Like I said, really basic set. Uh, set. No fancy EVs or anything like that, just max special defense. And then finally, we've got Physical, uh, Physically Offensive Life Orb Lucario with uh, Sword Stance. Um, I realize I'm very heavy with the physical offense this week. Um, maybe more so than the specially, sort of special offense on this team. Um, but again, he doesn't have much for it if I can get Sword Stance up against something, so... His Heatran might not want to stay in. Uh, his Crook, if it's a fast one, it will obviously beat me. But if it's not a fast one, then I will outspeed it. I'm actually adamant because there are things, like I said, his speed tiers are a bit weird. Um, everything I outspeed everything as adamant. But the things that he would outspeed me with if I was Jolly, still outspeed me regardless. So there's not much point of me being a Jolly Lucario, if you get what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's there just to hit really hard, basically. Looking at Paul's team really quick, um, he has the Drudigan. The Tornado's T, the Mega Gallade, the Vicavolt, the Heatran, and the Crocodile. Now, I can quickly, let me have a look, see if I can find uh, the team. Um, it's pretty much what I was expecting. Um, I wasn't expecting Vicavolt, but the other five. Um, maybe not as much the Drudigan as well. Um, I wasn't too sure what that would potentially do uh, against me. Um... But the other four, the Torn, the Gallade, the Heatra, and the Crocodile, I was fairly certain they were definitely going to be coming along. Um, but me and Paul both agreed that our drafts, we kind of had three or four things on, on our drafts, which kind of screwed each other's teams over um, pretty hard. Um, and the rest were just kind of crap. So whatever we bought, there were definitely going to be things that um, put us in good or bad scenarios. But these are the teams we went with. Uh, what I've just found is Paul's uh, rest of his draft. He's got Lorantis, Glaceon, uh, Kangaskhan. Uh, Pre Marina and Scolopede, which he didn't bring. I was so thankful not to see the Scolopede. Um, quite surprised because it would have helped against Mega Rero. Um, he might obviously if he got a Sword Stance up, he'd probably just swept through my whole team anyway. Um, it's always nice to basically see, not see a Scolopede. That's why I was like sort of heavily prepped with Salamence um, and the Lucario with Extreme Speed, um, j just to try and take these hits as best as possible. Delmise might have been able to a liver move, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I mean Jirachi would have died to Earthquake, you know, Rock Slide might have taken out uh, Salamence, um, Rock Slide might have taken out Aerodactyl, uh, just a powerful Mega Horn might have taken out um, Gastrodon, and then Lucario would just died to an Earthquake, so you know, really happy not to see that Pokemon, but otherwise, these are the teams we've got. Um, it was a really good game, I'm going to tell you that in advance, but without further ado, let's get straight into the action. Thank you. 
Right, so we are challenged by Pokemon Trainer Pool. There is no slowdown, there is no speed up. We are just going to go straight through this battle um, because it was a, it was a really fast paced game, end to end stuff. I do get the advantage uh, leading off here. I do have Salamence in, I do have Dragon Claw. Now, if he's a defensive one, I'm pretty sure I could still two hit KO this thing. Um, so I'm going to go for Dragon Claw because worst comes to worst, I thought he was going to Dragon Tail me out. Um, and that does a lot of damage. Uh, and here he reveals Glare, which. It's probably the worst thing that could have happened, um, mainly because Salamence is now kind of pointless, other than trying to hit ridiculously hard. So, um, I'm going to switch out here into my Jirachi, thinking I can kill this thing with a Moonblast. However, he switches out, um, which I wasn't really expecting. I wasn't sure what Dragon was doing for him this game, so he actually decides to save it, which is good. Um, but he either calls my switch into Jirachi or goes into Crook, because he just doesn't want lots of damage being done. So... Um, in comes to Rachi. I will outspeed this crook if it is, um, even if it's max speed. I looked at the calcs and I will live any move by like a really high roll, knockoff or earthquake. But he decides to stay and go for stealth rock. So my aggressive play, um, I felt was justified because I kind of needed to get on the front foot after turn one having my Salamence, which is probably like my biggest threat to his entire team. Done, gone. Because if I'd got one Dragon Dance up, I could have potentially just cleaned through his team. Um, so, yeah, he does decide to switch out this time, and I'm going to call the switch because he is not going to stay in because Energy Board are taken out, and Heatran is definitely the thing that is going to come in on my Jirachi every time because my Jirachi cannot touch this thing. Um, so I'm going to switch out into Salamence because it's my most expendable mom purely because it's paralyzed now, um, which is a shame because, like I've already said, without the paralysis, it would have had the potential just to clean through Paul's team. Um, every time that crook came uh, was in, for example, I could have just came in, intimidated, I'd have lived any hit because I am Salamence, I have Intimidate, and I could just set up to plus one. Uh, I'd have Z-Fly to hit one thing really hard, and then I'd have Earthquake and Dragon Claw, which would just clean everything else up. Um, but he does hit the Magma Storm, so I am trapped, but I was not going to switch out anyway. And he does reveal the Hidden Power Ice, which is really good. So that means, um, to me, I'm still really scared he's got Power Herb Solar Beam, because... That, I mean, his heat channel is a huge offensive threat to my team, and I thought he wouldn't leave it so Gastrodon can't be touched. Um, so I bring in Lucario, click the close combat, and when I see he stays in, I know he's going to be Chuckleberry, and he is. But Lucario with a life orb adamant does an absolute butt ton to this thing, uh, revealing it's quite offensive, um, but it does live. However, we are going to lose Lucario here because he is going to hit the Magma Storm on me, which is a shame. If he'd have missed that Magma Storm, Lucario would have been in. Uh, as well, just to do a lot of work. Um, but he's going to kill me, obviously, regardless of the close combat, I would have been dead. So, I am 6-4 down early on. Two of my hard hitters gone. Um, but we're still we're still in with a really good shout, because the Dragon's at half, the Heatran's at half, and the Crook's at half, or below half, rather, all of them. So, this is looking good. It's looking like Jirachi and uh, Aerodactyl can start to do some work late game. Um, especially as I haven't seen a Scarf yet. Um, I click Toxic here because I, I'm pretty sure he's going to switch. Why would he stay in? Um, I have the Rindo, and if I lose the Rindo because he goes for Solar Beam, then fair play, but he would lose his Power Herb as well. So, I do hit the Toxic on this. I'm not going to stay in because I know this thing gets Energy Ball, potentially Giga Drain as well, um, and I don't want to stay in on that. So, I'm going to go into my Jirachi, expecting a Grass move of some sort. Um, however, he is just going to click Roost. I believe this turned out to be a free attack Roost Seth uh, Vicar Vault. Um, but with the Toxic, it is going to allow me to 1v1 this uh, with Jirachi a, a lot better. Also, shout out to Paul using Totem Vicavolt. It That thing is enormous. Um, so, this turn I am going to go for a Psychic, I believe. And I wasn't sure if this is going to be some kind of defensive Vicavolt. Um, I do go for the Psychic, and it's going to do a clean 50% or so. Um, and with the Toxic, that means another one will take it out. He is going to go for Bug Buzz, but because Jirachi is Jirachi, it is grossly fat at times. Um, and with the leftovers, I'm going to be able to comfort comfortably um, recover over half. And I'm going to kill this thing with any kind of move that I want to go for. I click Moonblast because I was scared he would switch into the Crocodile to try and take advantage of me clicking Psychic again. Um, in hindsight, he probably would have done that because he knows I'm faster than him anyway. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I do take out the Vicar Vault, which is nice. And then uh, Paul makes a misplay here, and we talked about this after the game. He brings in the Heatran because he had a kind of like a brain fart moment where he thought Heatran quad resisted Psychic. Um, however, I do click Psychic. I count max special defense, max HP. Heatran takes 11%. To me, it looked like he was way less than 11%. So I was happy to stay in and click Psychic, and that thing dies. So we're back to 4 and 4. Paul's got two things completely weakened down, and I've got Jirachi who's slowly healing itself back up. Um, and three really healthy ones in the background, so it's looking good for me so far. Now, in comes Tornadus, this thing's obviously going to be faster than me, um, and this was kind of like my last Pokemon I wanted to scout out, so I was quite happy Paul brought this in. If it's not Scarfed, Aerodactyl literally outspeeds its whole team uh, and can clean up. He does give the Heat Wave a miss, doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, he goes to the Hurricane and he does hit this, and here we find out he is a Life Orb Tornadus. That does a butt-ton to Gastrodon and it does confuse us so the moment of truth if I break through here I'm still going to be in a good position I do break through and I do land the toxic now the fact that I break through that confusion is actually really important as you will see later on in the game Gastrodon has served its purpose it can die now I now know that um, Aerodactyl can come in on this thing and just click their relational stone edge depending on its health and kill it and he hasn't got a switch into it either so Gastron does go down, um, but that is going to be a turn of Toxic and Life Orb damage for this Tornadus. Now, if it wants to switch in, obviously it does have Regenerator with the Toxic and the Stealth Rocks up. It pretty much negates Regenerator at this point. Um, so I'm going to bring in my Mega Aero because this is my chance to Mega Evolve for free. Um, however, Paul did uh, keep his Drudigan from the start of the game, and he's going to bring that in as a sack. Um, purely because anything else in his team would have probably died to two Aerial Aces at this point. Um, so I do go for the Mega Evolution, and I'm just going to click the Save Aerial Ace, there's no point in me clicking Aqua Tail, because uh, if, if Crook comes in it dies to two Aerial Aces anyway, um, and Heatran's dead, so I'm going to click Aerial Ace, and it is going to take out the uh, Drudigan. Now, this Drudigan was actually offensive, it turns out, or Sheer Force at least, because obviously turn one we would have seen, there was no rough skin. Um, but yeah, he was offensive because he had Gunk Shot, Sheer Force for my Clefable or something. Um, which I didn't even bring. So, uh, in comes the Crook. Now, Aquatail might kill this thing, but if I miss, I lose. And I, I can't risk that at this point. So, I'm going to go into uh, my Delmise, appropriately named Wanker. Um, because I do have the Cobbleberry, and I can take this thing on fairly well. Because once I've lost my item, obviously Knock Off won't be doing too much. Um, and Earthquake won't be doing too much to it either. He does, unfortunately, crit me through the berry, which is annoying. Um, but we do survive, and I'm at the range of health where I can live a another Knock Off. Because I figured out at this point this is a, a very bulky, very defensive Crocodile because this is his answer to Mega Aerodactyl. Um, I'm going to click Knock Off here because I honestly thought he'd switch um, into Tornadus expecting the Power Whip. But actually the Knock Off works quite well because this means he cannot be uh, above the range of an Aqua Tail even if he gets me to minus 2 at this point which is great. Uh, because of Stealth Rocks, he's going to switch in and out if he wants to play an Intimidate game on me. So, because I know I'm fast already from the early game ballsy prediction, I do go into Jirachi and I can freely click Moonblast. I'm very much expecting him to bring in his um, his Mega Gallade. And because he needs to save that Crook to have any chance of winning, basically, uh, against my Mega Aero. I do go for Moonblast and uh, Gallade, despite being you know quite bulky on the special defensive side, takes a lot of damage from that Moonblast, 60% or so. Um, we do get a special attack drop, obviously not that it matters against a Gallade, and as I mentioned in team preview, this is indeed a Mega Gallade. So if he has close combat he takes me out, but that's fine, um, I just bring an arrow and I pretty much win by clicking Aerial Ace. Um, if he has Drain Punch, I will live, but it will then be a roll at potentially um, whether he last kills or not. So he does Drain Punch, I do live um, on like the smallest amount ever. Um, but I'm going to Moonblast, the amount of health he gets, um, I think we talked about this after the game, I literally almost got a max roll to take out that Gallade. Um, so it wouldn't have been too bad if I'd have not killed him there, because um, even if he started bulking up or Drain Punch again, he wouldn't have enough health or enough defense to live a hit from Aerodactyl. Um, in comes the Tornadus, it's now 2v2, um, like I said, this thing's going to take Life Orb and Toxic Damage every time it comes in, uh, he does go for the Heat Wave and it does connect, um, if that didn't connect that would have been kind of entertaining, I would have potentially got a 2-0 instead of a 1-0, um, 
Um, but it is now Mega Aerodactyl versus this Tornadus and the Crook, neither of which are Scarfed, so I know I outspeed. It's just a matter of whether I can kill them and hit the moves that I need to hit. So I know at this range I don't need to click st uh, Stone Edge whatsoever. Aerialize will kill. He's not defensive in any sense. He is full on offense with Life Orb because he does an owl to my team. Um, and it does go down. So it now comes down to my Mega Aero versus his uh, Crocodile. We're both at about half. He's Well, he's at about a third maybe. Um, all I need to do is land an Aqua Tail and this Crocodile dies. That's all I need to do. Will I land the Aqua Tail? Yes, I will. Thank God. The 90% move. I, I don't know why it does that there, but it does that. Um, we do get the kill on the Crook, and that is going to be the very, very, very close 1-0 uh, against Paulie Mac. Paul, that was a fantastic battle. I really enjoyed that, and I don't win many Week 1 games, so we're actually off to a really good start. Um, I'm literally battling Ellie about 20 minutes after narrating this video, um, so literally going in from one game to the next. I had to delay my game against Paul by about a week because his computer broke. Bless him, the screen smashed in his, in his backpack while his laptop was in I don't get how that happened. Um, but yeah, the, the wait was long. Um, I made this team way before the game, so I'm just glad that we came through with the 1-0 victors. You know, Jirachi and Mega Aero put in more than a shift. They were the MVPs. Um, I believe I gave MVP to Mega Aero, because purely without it, I wouldn't have won. But it was the same with Jirachi, but Jirachi died. That's the only negative factor about Jirachi's performance this game, it didn't live and Mega Aero did, so, um, but they were really good mons to use, and I've always wanted to use Mega Aerodactyl, because I thought it would suit my style of play, I like playing offensive, and to me, that was a pretty good debut for it, so, yeah, guys, um, thanks for watching this battle, week one was a victory, we are 1 and 0, oh. um, week two, like I said, we're going up against Ellie, and that'll be up next Monday, um, check out my draft analysis, A, if there is one, and B, uh, if it's up at this point, um, and if not, then hopefully you guys do go and check out uh, the rest of my videos. Check out Paul's channel as well. I will leave a link to his um, channel and Twitter in the description below. And the PPL um, public spreadsheet and everyone else's links as well. So yeah, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already just to keep up with the PPL. Um, that's pretty much it. I've rambled on as I do in ordinary Jack fashion. And I will see you next time. Bye.